Uh, hello, this is a um, video illustration of an article we just posted online this weekend. Um, it's a topic we cover in, well, mostly in our Inland and Coastal Navigation book. But what it is, is a review, a survey, of all the important publications that a vessel should have on board for an extended ocean voyaging. Now, you might do that differently if it's a, like a, a race to Hawaii, uh, you know, a charter boat race to Hawaii, and then you get on a plane and fly home. You would, a lot of these you would still need, but uh, maybe not all of them. But so the idea here is you have a yacht of your own and you're planning it, or you're the you're a deck officer on a ship or ocean-going tug, and it's your job to outfit the boat, the vessel, with the right, uh, right resources. Um, and then this is a review of all of that. Now, uh, a lot of these you can get as printed books. They'd be very expensive. Some of them add up to, adds up to quite a bit of money uh, and takes up a lot of space. But we also can get them all essentially, most, not all, not all, but most of them we can get as PDF files, which we have lots of ways to organize. And uh, then we have these references on board. You could have them in a computer. You could have them on a couple of iPhones or tablets, and, uh, things like that. And uh, that, that's a mechanical, that's a, that's a process that should be de described maybe later. But now we just go over the books, o over the items. And again, let's see, most of these publications here, what's a note, have an annual. They do have an annual update, but for the most part, I mean, mo most of the updates are really not that crucial to a small craft navigator. So uh, the main thing is just get one recent set all together and then you can update it as you might need it now okay so going down the list of what you need then let well this is now i don't know if this even belongs here or not but nautical charts obviously the first and first thing you need is a is a good nautical charts of your of your coverage uh, i mean where you're going and uh, when this is now, and also, by the way, we're talking about extended ocean voyage into international waters. So it's a little different if you sail from San Francisco to Hawaii. I mean, you've gone clear across the ocean, but there's no tricky uh, borders you're crossing. Whereas you go to a foreign country, international sailing, then things all of a sudden get a little bit trickier. And uh, also, with regard to the charts, it gets trickier. So we've put together a note here. This is a link. Are these live? Yeah. Okay. This is a, li this is a link. And I'm going to put a link to all of these in the description so you can come back and look at those if you want to. But here's an article about where you get charts and how you can find out what foreign charts are available, both printed charts and electronic charts. And... Uh, so first of all, how you find out which ones actually exist, and then you look at the various options for how you buy them. And that's an that's a article here. So let's go back. So nautical charts taken care of. Then we come to the most important book in navigation, the Navigation Rules book. And so there are uh, several. Uh, th this is a link to the official one, the official one at the U.S. Coast Guard site. And I would get a printed one. Do we actually list that here? Ah, I should come back. When you come back and look at this, there'll be a link to the printed one. We recommend you actually have a printed copy of the, uh, of the rules book on board. It's just a little easier to make your notes, do a quick lookup of things and so forth. But there's a PDF online. We also have a PDF, and I'll just add, you can look at these. Let's see if I have some of this stuff open I can show you here. Adobe Reader. Where is that? Here. Okay, which one is this? Okay, let me just go up here. Uh, rules, navigation rules. Yeah, see, this is the official one. The official one that's online. And there's, it's totally, un, there's no interaction here. There's, no, there's not even any bookmarks. There's nothing. Okay, so, but if you look at the one we made for our class, this one, this one then, um, this one is all interlinked, plus, plus, plus. This is all interlinked. It has bookmarks. And we put all these bookmarks over here, plus these things are interlinked and so forth. So the rules of the road is very important to have a, a absolute control over the rules of the road. Um, and then that's the various ways that you can get those rules of the road. And then there's also this one online. We recommend you take a look at that, and I'll leave that for you to come and look at. Chart number one. Okay, so now these are sort of like basic things everyone would realize, but um, 
the, the, obviously, they have to be there. And we recommend a printed one, a printed one of that. The book's about $10 in print in the U.S. Okay, so chart number one. That's a, that's a publication. You can get it right here, chart number one. And uh, let's see, I should try to leave this open here. And then I can just go up here, window, chart number one. Okay, so chart number one is a list, and many people know about this already. It describes all the symbols on the chart. And uh, all the symbols, like these are recs, and it describes the symbols. And the new version, as of about, um, well, it's not that new now, maybe 2013, 14, something like that. They now include the ectus. Now, what they call ectus here, these are the E and C versions of the chart symbols. Not, not the, R, not the uh, RNC. The RNC is just a copy. That's an electronic chart, that's a copy of the paper chart. So they, they would look like these. These are, tech, these are technically the international paper chart symbols. These are the NOAA paper chart symbols if they differ from this, from these international paper chart symbols. But these are the ENC versions, okay? And um, so back here, back here we have a recommendation that you take a look at our book on ENCs. Um, well, we'll get to that. Okay, U.S. Coast Pilots. Now, uh, the U.S. Coast Pilots, they have a b basic definition that they are books that include all of the information, all the crucial or much of the crucial information that's needed for safe navigation, safe, efficient navigation, that is not on the charts. So these are, these are extremely important books. Let me see. I don't know if I have one of those open here. Uh, window Coast Pilot. No. Um, let me uh, open one of those. U.S. Coast Pilot. Um, chart number one about it. U.S. Pilot Charts. Coast Pilot. I don't have a Coast Pilot right here. Okay, so in that, uh, but these, uh, oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed about that. Um, okay, so let's go back. No, I don't need that, nor that. Let's go back and actually look at where they are. The Coast Pilots are online, and then these are about, there's about nine volumes. And uh, they look like you can go online. And well, let me just uh, grab, open one chapter. Maybe I can do. Uh, well, can I download one chapter? No, I won't. I'm gonna let that go. So take a look at those extremely valuable books. It's a must-have, uh, uh, must-have publication uh, to have on board. And the Coast Pilots, and they're free, uh, free uh, publications to download. Sailing directions and route. Now these are all, these are available. These are the these again. We're talking about international travel here. So these are the U.S. produced international coast pilots. So these coast pilots here apply only to U.S. waters, and they also include, for example. Uh, it'll include weather statistics, so you can decide what time of year is best to go on a particular trip. They include the regulations. They include notes on currents. They tell what the land looks like. Uh, amazing uh, resource. Absolutely fundamental. It would be negligent to go sail around in U.S. coastal waters without having read the Coast Pilot for that area. And one of the things that we do to convince our to you know to convince our students to have a look to see the value is we say go get the Coast Pilot. Those who don't know about it, right? We say go get the Coast Pilot for your area and then read it and see how much you learn about your own waters right there from that book. Extremely valuable. So these are sailing directions are the same thing, same format, same structure, same description as a goal, things that are needed that are not on the charts, and, uh, but for foreign waters. And these are available from the, uh, from the uh, NGA publication site, and there's links here, and so forth. Um, the uh, and they have pictures. They have pictures of the harbors and uh, pictures of the harbors and so forth. 
and international rules checking in. How do you have to check in the country with the, all the phone numbers and contacts and so forth? All of that technical information about getting into a foreign country is in these books here. That's the that's the official reference for those. Now the planning guides. That's something that's that's also essentially the sailing directions. That's the same thing. Also, you get the same department, and you have to pick the regions. If you go here, oh, let's say, okay, so that, do I go direct? Am I going to get there? Oh, okay. So here you see the different volumes involved. 148 would be the Caribbean, and then over here would be um, 143 goes into Gibraltar and so forth. Um, so that's uh, planning guides. Now, the oh, but okay, that's the planning guides or sailing direction. But the planning guides are just organized in a different way. They'll take an ocean like the North Atlantic and then go circular around it and organize the content they're providing according to the nation, the country involved. But, uh, so they're very easy to get there and get a quick overview. So once you get your quick overview for your trip, then you do have to come back to the sailing direction. So these don't replace each other, they're complements to each other. U.S. light lists now, um, that's also, uh, this is for, this is a light list for your boat is a mandatory equipment if, for sailing at night. Also, sometimes extremely valuable for sailing during the daytime as well because they describe all of the navigation aids. Let's see here, window, light list. Here's a light list. And here is, for example, a light near us. And um, let me put that up here. And you see, here's a typical entry. Point Wilson light. It says the latitude, longitude. It's alternating red and white five seconds. Then it tells you very specifically what it does. 0 0.1 seconds, red flash. Then 4.9 seconds, eclipsed, EC. 0 0.1 seconds white flash, 4.9 seconds eclipse. It is uh, a white, uh, no, white, uh, the white light has a range of 18 nautical miles or a nominal range, and the red is 18, it's a white octagonal thing standing on a whatever that is, on a building, a little building. I think the Coast Pilot probably has a little picture of that lighthouse. Uh, so, and that's there, but then also at the beginning of these books, the light list, let me see, I got that too big. The light list is a tremendous resource, as is a coast pilot, for example. So the light list will go in and tell you about the different buoys and the shapes of them and the light list. In other words, this is not about specific lights. This is about lights in general, navigation with lights. So there's a tremendous resource here on navigation with lights in general in that. And the coast pilot's the same way. There are general, the coast pilot has three or four sections to it. And a given area will be presented in all the sections. One's the very detailed, going around the particular chart, point by point on the chart, telling you the details, the currents in that area, local winds and so forth. Then there's another area that re refers to its location within the coast and, and so forth. So, um, so that's a light list. Now there are also international light lists. So this is not this light list is not going to have Bermuda or Tortola or anything like that in it here. But then you'll get these from these international light lists here, and that's a, the U.S. covers the lights in seven volumes. The Canadians also have a set that you could uh, download. The British have a very good set too, but it's probably a hundred dollars for the printed book. Uh, they don't have any. Uh, they don't. They don't give away any data. So then there's international tide table. So there. Oh, do I have that open? Let me just open this. I should show this here. Um, this is uh, okay. Allow. Let me come back to this. That's a so. This is a international tide tables. Now the U.S. The U.S. does have. It's not that well known, but it does print these books that cover, if I look here on this map, here's a map. They have a tide table that covers like this ocean right here. No, actually, I think it covers the, this coast, this coast here of both oceans. 
and uh, of all these countries here. And, but it's not that easy to find online. You can find it in the store and buy it. But here is a unique link right here. And why it's under historic ties, I don't know. But if you go right here, you can download 1920 East Coast of North America and South America and Greenland, Europe, West Coast of Africa. So these are international tides from the U.S. Now they also have tidal current tables that cover many places outside of the U.S. But this is much more limited, much more limited. Uh, so you're going to have to go for these data, for this uh, uh, for the current data. You have to go to the um, you have to really go to the hydrographic offices, the local hydrographic offices to get currents. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. But let's see. Oh, what I was going to show you here is here's the this is a free navigation program called Open Open CPN. And you can go here. Uh, let me get rid of this for the moment. And go here. And I don't have any charts loaded, but you could say show tide stations. Now, it doesn't show them for the whole world, but it shows them look throughout this area, a few here, a lot in Europe, up through Canada, Australia. So these are tide stations. And these are the real tides. You, you click these. Now, th it, actually, the tides that they're using are from a program called X-Tides. But it's a, it's a generally dependable source. Now, for the currents, there's not that many places that you can get the currents from this source. But you do get the current stations from all the US data because the US data is uh, free data, open to the public. But for other places, you're going to have to get the hydrographic data from the International Hydrographic Offices. Now, I do I have that here? Members, oh yeah, here. Here's a, here's a link to the International Hydrographic Office in Switzerland. And um, member states, um, oh, here, yeah, it's a strange picture. But here they are, right? So if you want to know what Portugal, say, I just saw Portugal here. You click Portugal, and then here's going to be all the information about Portugal, including their website. Now, I should have checked this before I stand here and expose myself. But... Um, uh, then, but you can go in there, and then once you get to one of these foreign countries, their hydrographic office, then you have to s surf around on their page and find out where their tide and current data is. So that's the way that works, and that's how you would prepare for the ocean voyaging with uh, ahead of time for those nations. Um, worldwide, this is now interesting. This is a book, um, actually. I probably have a copy. This book has uh, got a, 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 the title Worldwide Marine Radio Facsimile Broadcast Schedules. Now, why do I want that? Let's say I don't even have a fax machine on my boat. I'm not taking fax. Well, let me argue that this is a valuable publication even if you're not taking fax maps and uh, directly. Because normally people don't do that. They'll get their fax maps, their radio fax maps. They'll get the same maps, but they'll get an email request to sail docks or something and get a nice, crisp, beautiful map and not have to deal with a radio, the HF radio. But the reason this publication here is so valuable is because as you go through it, let me see if I have that open to show you. Oh, I don't have it open, I'm pretty sure. But I must, yeah, our facts. Here's the other interesting thing about this. This, okay, now does it have any bookmarks? Yeah, it has bookmarks here, right, and so forth. Honolulu, Hawaii. So what this is doing, now this is Europe, the section Europe. This is showing you the schedule uh, of, P, of, the, of the radio stations and nations that are broadcasting HF facsimile maps. Now, um, what's important here is not even so much to get those maps by this HF radio, but to know ahead of time which nations actually make these maps. 
In other words, if these nations are making these maps, and that means they have a meteorology department, and that meteorology department is not just looking at the pure model output. They are, for their region or their coastal waters, they have their meteorologists are, are thinking about it and writing something, like the Germans for sure have, have, a, 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 have a lot of input into the maps that are going out. So it's not just pure GFS or... Uh, European model data that's being put out as a map, they're actually professionals. Now, once you know that these countries make these maps, and you know you could get them by HF radio this way if you did HF radio, but once you know they've got them, then you can actually go and figure out where to get them by email request. And I think we have an article online in the same blog somewhere about how to do that. It's definitely covered in our weather textbook. So so that's one of the things that's valuable to have this book. And oh, and why do we want to get those maps? Because that those are just ways to test the we're going to navigate by the by the grib files pretty much, the model forecasts. But what we want is we want a verification of those models from these professional meteorologists. The other reason this particular publication is valuable is at the very end, and sure enough, it's not even mentioned here, but somewhere at the end of this publication, there's an appendix. They don't link it anywhere, and it's hard to find. It's what we would always refer to as buried. It's totally hidden, but here it is. Here's the section, and I don't know where it begins exactly, but this is a section that describes the FTP mail program. Of, of the National Weather Service. This is the procedure that you use to request any map that they make or any text file to request it by email. And sure enough, you can request the Australian maps, a lot of the British maps, some of the other maps you can actually request from the National Weather Service through the FTP mail program. This, this for example, would actually literally, that should create the email. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. I have to. Uh, they've uh, they've maybe changed something, but that's not important now. Uh, if you read the instructions, you'll see how this works. I thought these links actually took you straight to the created the right email for you, but it, it's the instructions for doing it. And so that's a very valuable publication. Uh, where are we here? Lightless. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Okay, so now where am I back to? Where are we? World. So that's why that one is is famous. Radio aids to navigation. That is the publication that lists all the uh, where you would, where you would, for example, get voicemail broadcasts, voicemail broadcasts um, over the over uh, over the radio, either VHF or or VHF or HF. This is a key. This is a key document. For example, um, let me see if I have that guy open. Um, 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 here, uh, window, uh, pub 117, yeah. Oh, okay, so here's an example. Now, I, this is a section where I just searched on NMC because I know that's a station down in California. But, and then the first thing I found here was the time of day that the Coast Guard in the California area, in the California area, repeats the coastal weather forecast. Now this is not the national this is not NOAA weather radio. NOAA weather radio has a certain range, but these guys have a farther range than the NOAA stations typically. And furthermore, they are uh, uh, there's somebody there uh, at different times, you see. And, the, and this is also, by the way, the same time they're going to give you the broadcast notice to Mariners. So they're going to give you the broadcast notice to Mariners on channel 22. If you happen to have 16 turned on, they're going to announce it, go to 22, and we're going to read the broadcast notice to Mariners. But if you don't, um, then this book would tell you you go there at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock and so forth at uh, these frequencies. This probably does not exist anymore actually. Uh, but this is your VHF radio channel 22. Then if I go next, let's see. Next, what do I got here? Okay, these are the voice broadcasts of the high seas weather. 
These are the voice broadcasts of the high seas weather. So this document, if you don't have this information somewhere from some other source, then you would uh, get it from this reference. That's what this book is for. Now, if you had our marine weather textbook, we have all that in there as well. Okay, radio aids and navigation, that's a fundamental book. Pilot charts. Now, you know, pilot charts, let's see, I'll get, I must have a, a picture of a pilot chart. Um, uh, pilot charts, North Atlantic. Okay, so they're the things that look like this. Many people know about it. They have all kinds of information, all kinds of information on them. These are PDFs. You can download them uh, from uh, the NGA, uh, NGA website. The other interesting thing to check would be go to OpenCPN, and I've got the link to that here, and you can download them as actual loadable, navigatable, you can navigate on them, uh, e-charts. And that's at OpenCPN, and there's a link to that. And you'll also see here, I have a link to some either even better wind data. This is the best wind data, this Kogal. Uh, oh, okay, I'm not going to deal with that. I have to get the, get the flash going. But you got this link you can go to. This is the best climatic wind data that exists. It's much better than the pilot charts or any other source. But that's just for the wind. The pilot charts have other things. Okay, I'm gonna. This is taking it's a long list. I'm 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 too winded here. Too too long winded. International code of signals. That's um, that's uh, if your radios are all working fine and you're dealing with uh, people that all speak the same language, speak your language, then you don't need any special signals. But if any of the but you could also be in a bind where you do need to uh, you know and uh, respond reply to signals. Uh, with your flags or with your arms waving around or tapping out Morse code by clicking your microphone, various things like that. That's all in the International Code of Signal. That's a free publication you could download, and that would be considered mandatory for long ocean voyaging. There's, it's a lot in there. The American, the Bowditch American Practical Navigator, that's a long reference uh, that's got... Uh, all sorts of navigation references in it, um, marine and navigation and weather and oceanography and electronics and so forth. So that I won't, uh, I won't show you now. I think most people are familiar with that. The Nautical Almanac. Now that is a book I think you have to buy. To get the official one, you really have to buy it. It's a $30 printed book. But there's other, there's other options. We recommend the Nautical Almanac, even though we just recently published a book on the virtues of the Air Almanac, but uh, and but the Air Almanac's a free publication that's got all the same almanac data. Excuse me, all the same almanac data as the Air Almanac, but it's free. It's this one's free. That one's thirty dollars. But uh, you have to read our little booklet, or we have an article online here. There's a short article on online that discusses the two. But it's it's for it's for celestial navigation, or Planning daylight, daylight and dark, you know, that's sort of celestial that you have to know if, in a powerboat even. Okay, U.S. international frequencies. This is um, for your radios. You would like to think that you have all that information in the radio manuals, but probably not. At least, at least that's at least my experience on getting on various boats. We also, so you can get that at the NAV Center, USCG NAV Center, but that's all kind of like all over the place. So we made this document here. You can go and download that for free. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Well, there's a set of bookmarks in it. And so you can go and use these bookmarks. And you get then all that information that it would take you a while to piece together from the FCC. And uh, what else here? That's the frequency. This is something that... Okay, so is this critical or not? It's just really very nice. So the question is, I would want to take this picture of this international uh, time zones. Uh, you, get, you do get, by the way, in the almanac, strangely enough, it's a valuable thing, you get a nice day of the year calendar that tells you what number to each day of the year. That's in the air almanac or the nautical almanac. And, the, and that way, plus this, it shows you what nations are on what daylight, what zones. That helps you plan 
plan your arrival times and you know is a hotel bar going to be open when you get there i don't know what um and so uh th that's a very very nice thing to have on board on the na for the navigator P people are going to ask you that question so you can answer it anyway so that's a very long i'm sorry it's such a long review of these things uh but this are this article then you can just print out and it'll have that reference for you and uh, i'll stop there